Cro-Magnons, the earliest people in Europe with anatomically modern skeletons, arrived some 50,000 years ago. Extinct animal bones, flint tools and a human skull were discovered in the Cro-Magnon rock shelter, spurring investigations by French geologist and prehistorian Louis Latte. In March 1868, he unearthed the first five skeletons of early modern humans in southwestern France. He dig up four prehistoric adults and one infant's fragmentary remains, as well as perforated shell ornaments, an ivory object, and a carved reindeer antler. These Cro-Magnon individuals were rapidly identified as a separate prehistoric human group, distinct from the Neanderthal fossils discovered in Germany in 1856. Until recently, Early European modern humans were referred to in scientific literature as Cro-Magnons until the phrase, anatomically modern humans, became more prevalent. Meanwhile, the destiny of the Neanderthals has long been questioned, having vanished from the fossil record around 40,000 years ago. Cro-Magnons were strong and powerful, standing 5 feet 5 inches to 5 feet 7 inches tall. The body was muscular and solid, with visible musculature. The face was small and broad, with a straight brow and modest brow ridges. Indeed, the modern human's face may have evolved and vanished multiple times in the past, which is not unlikely given that facial anatomy is heavily influenced by diet and environment. In fact, the modern-like face of Homo antecessor, which is strikingly similar to that of modern humans, may have a long lineage in our genus. In other words, the modern-looking face of Homo antecessor is actually very ancient, and it has been passed down to our species. Whereas Neanderthals' faces changed the most during their evolution. In contrast, the massive supraorbital region, which is most noticeable in the Neanderthal cranium, must have given their visage an unusually savage appearance. The Cro-Magnons were the first humans in Europe to exhibit a prominent chin. The brain volume was about 1,600 cubic centimeters, which was slightly greater than the average for modern humans. In comparison to other early human species, Cro-Magnons are estimated to have been fairly tall. According to current theory, these early European modern humans, also known as Cro-Magnons, were the first early modern humans to settle in Europe, migrating from Western Asia and occupying the continent continuously as early as 56,800 years ago. They had broader features, more prominent brow ridges, and larger teeth, and were physically comparable to current Europeans. But the earliest specimens also have certain traits in common with Neanderthals. Their weapons included spears, spear throwers, harpoons, throwing sticks, and Paleolithic dogs. Among the many artistic works created by the Cro-Magnons are cave paintings, Venus figurines, perforated batons, animal figurines and geometric patterns. They could have used ochre crayons, tattoos, scarification and piercings to beautify their bodies. For a long time, Cro-Magnons coexisted in Europe with Neanderthals, whose morphology and DNA were clearly different from ours. However, acquiring a credible Cro-Magnon DNA sequence was technically challenging. A team of geneticists has determined, that a Cro-Magnon person living in southern Italy 28,000 years ago was genetically and physically modern European. Cro-Magnons and Neanderthals coexisted in Europe between 50,000 and 40,000 years ago, according to new evidence, although they did not get more intimate than that. Researchers in Italy sequenced mitochondrial DNA from Cro-Magnon bones and discovered no evidence of Neanderthal DNA, meaning that the two early hominids did not interbreed to produce modern humans. The Paglici 23 specimen carried a mitochondrial DNA sequence that is still common in Europe, and that radically differs from those of almost contemporary Neanderthals. This demonstrates a genealogical continuity across nearly 30,000 years, from Cro-Magnon to modern Europeans, researchers wrote in the recently published paper. In fact, the findings reveal that morphological distinctions between Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons were related to significant genetic differences. Therefore, the Neanderthals, who lived in Europe for approximately 300,000 years, are not the forebears of modern Europeans. Between 300,000 and 40,000 years ago, the anatomically archaic Europeans known as Neanderthals were documented in the fossil record. Around 55,000 years ago, 
anatomically modern humans of the Cro-Magnon type migrated into Europe from the Middle East. Neanderthals lived alongside them for 1,000 to 10,000 years, depending on the location, but their skeletons vanished from the fossil record. The interpretation of these data is not straightforward. Neanderthals, according to the so-called out-of-Africa paradigm, are extinct, and modern Europeans are assumed to be descended from Cro-Magnons, who supplanted Neanderthals during their advance from Africa. Recent versions of the alternative, multi-regional hypothesis, on the other hand, claim that admixing with Cro-Magnons resulted in a minor, but non-negligible, contribution to modern Europeans' gene pool. One of the human race's earliest contributions to the world is art, and our sponsor today is currently the largest buyer in the art market. Masterworks is an award-winning startup based in New York City's financial district which was founded by a top 100 art collector and tech entrepreneurs who have founded companies valued at over $100 million. The Masterworks platform allows everyday investors to invest in shares of artwork from legendary artists including Picasso, Banksy and Monet without spending millions, while still potentially reaping benefits from its appreciation in value. But why invest in art? Art is a growing market with a low correlation to traditional equities like the stock market. Over the last 26 years, contemporary art prices have outpaced the S&P 500 by 131% and the market is still growing. In point of fact, financial experts at Deloitte are predicting the value of art as an asset class to grow to 2.6 trillion by 2026. And in the last 12 months, when many markets were suffering double-digit losses, Masterworks delivered tens of millions in net returns to their investors. Outlets including the Wall Street Journal, CNBC and CNN are raving about the idea, and demand has reached the point where Masterworks is looking to acquire more art on a weekly basis. Over 617,000 people have signed up so far, and highly compelling subscribers can claim your own free no-obligation account at the link in the description. In 1856, three years before Darwin's book on the origin of species was published, miners unearthed a skull and bones in a Nienda Valley cave in Germany, and the remains were initially described as those of a brutish race or someone disfigured by sickness. As Darwinian evolution became more commonly acknowledged, the realization that these fossils represented evidence of an older human species increased in popularity. Since then, experts have contested the role of Neanderthals in human evolution. According to my web-based research, the father of evolution, Charles Darwin, was a direct descendant of the Cro-Magnon people, whose arrival in Europe 30,000 years ago signaled the demise of Neanderthals. Darwin proposed in his groundbreaking 1859 book On the Origin of Species, that all humans descended from a common ancestor. Indeed, males of haplogroup R1b are direct ancestors of the Cro-Magnon people, who dominated modern human expansion throughout Europe beginning 30,000 years ago, heralding the extinction of the Neanderthal species. Darwin's deep ancestry revealed that the next mutation, which constituted a new lineage, arose in a man some 35,000 years ago, before traveling west towards Europe. In southern England, roughly 70% of men belong to haplogroup R1b, while the ratio surpasses 90% in regions of Ireland and Spain. Given that they most certainly crossed paths during thousands of years of European coexistence, the question of whether Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons mated remains unanswered. In a new study, scientists developed a simulation model based on what we know about Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon population density and dispersion, their findings back with prior genetic and morphological evidence suggesting interbreeding between these early humans and Neanderthals was unlikely. Two competing theories have largely replaced the notion that modern Europeans are directly descended from Neanderthals. One holds that modern humans emerged in Africa around 130,000 years ago, and completely replaced coexisting archaic forms humans without interbreeding, and the other holds that modern humans evolved gradually through interbreeding. According to the paper, analyses of physical features, ancient Neanderthal DNA, and modern DNA diversity suggest a recent African origin of modern humans with little or no Neanderthal contribution. All investigated Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA sequences, in particular, lie outside of the range of current variation and bear no resemblance to present European sequences. No degree of reproductive connection between the two groups, however, 
can be ruled out. As a result, the notion that hybridization did occur, but that early Europeans of modern anatomy were not genetically distinct to Neanderthals, or that most Neanderthal haplotypes were lost due to genetic drift, has been raised. As a result, placing Cro-Magnons in the context of recent human evolution is challenging. Although they had a culture that produced a variety of sophisticated tools such as retouched blades, end scrapers, and delicate bone tools, they appear to have also developed leather smoothing and scraping tools. Some Cro-Magnons have been linked to the Gravettian tool culture, which is marked by an abrupt retouching method that produces flat-backed implements. Although primitive houses, such as lean-tos against rock walls or stone structures, have been unearthed, Cro-Magnon homes are most commonly found in deep caverns and shallow caves formed by rock overhangs. The rock shelters were used all year. The Cro-Magnons appear to have been a settled society, only relocating when new hunting areas or environmental changes required them. Like the Neanderthals, Cro-Magnons also buried their dead. One of the earliest instances of prehistoric art is Cro-Magnon art. The Cro-Magnons carved and sculpted small engravings, reliefs and statuettes of humans and animals. Their human forms are often large-breasted, wide-hipped, and clearly pregnant ladies, hinting that they were employed in fertility ceremonies. The specific symbolism of these works is unknown, although they are usually, though not universally, thought to have practiced shamanism, in which cave art, particularly depictions of human-animal hybrids, played an essential role. They also wore colorful beads and plant fiber clothes dyed with various plant-based colors as status markers. They created bone flutes, whistles and other instruments. Animals are depicted in various Cro-Magnon cave paintings in France and Spain, and some of them are stunningly gorgeous. These paintings were thought to have magical or ritual significance for the people. The great quality of their work shows that the Cro-Magnons were not inexperienced novices, but had previously experimented with various artistic mediums and genres. Decorated tools and weapons show that these people valued art for aesthetics, as well as religious purposes. Finally, it's difficult to say how long the Cro-Magnons lived, where they came from, and what happened to them. They were most likely progressively incorporated into later European groups, according to the current theory of human evolution.